Tell me if this sounds familiar. You just shot some amazing footage in log, you pull it into Premiere Pro, and you're trying to color grade it, but it feels like you're learning a new language. Well, today we're gonna to simplify the process to get your footage to go from this to this. Let's jump right in. So now we're in Premiere Pro and I have my workspace set up to color grade. So what I like to do is I like to have all the panels that I need on the right side or on the same side. So I prefer right side. I prefer to have my screen in the middle here and then obviously my timeline down here. So up here, I have the Lumetri color and then here I have the scopes. So the first thing I like to do is I like to create an adjustment layer. And the reason that I have an adjustment layer over the top of my footage is because it makes it less destructive when I'm trying to tweak the image. If you didn't see what I did there, I hit new item and went to adjustment layer. So I know that color grading is the buzzword that's being used, but there's actually two parts to manipulating the footage to make it look good. The first part that we're going to go over is what I call the foundation, and that's color correction. So what we're trying to do here is make the image as natural and accurate as possible. So we're fixing things like exposure, um, contrast, shadows, whites and blacks, and we'll talk about more what those mean here pretty soon. Typically what I like to do is I like to go straight down the line. So we'll start here with white balance and work our way down. With white balance, if I'm going to try to make sure that that's correct, I'm going to try to find a part of the image that is white. So here looking at this uh, tethered rope, I may click on that. And that will give me the most accurate, hopefully the most accurate white balance for this image. Now, I did shoot this with the uh, cloudy setting on my camera which probably means I got really close to what I want it to be. Okay, so now that we've done our color, let's close that and we're gonna focus on light. So this is where I start to introduce the information I need in my lemetroscopes. The lemetroscope is basically telling you the lightest and darkest parts of the image from left to right. So what's being represented, if you look here on this part of the image, that's here, right? This scale or this scope is gonna go from zero to 100. You can see that most of my information for this color grading is here at the top, which probably means in most cases that this part of the image is going to be bright, like you can see here, okay? I'm a darker figure compared to what's up here or around here. So I'm probably sitting in this part of the image and that's why you're seeing a dip in the uh, Lumetri scope there. As far as the uh, difference between my face and the light up here. Lumetroscopes are measuring two things primarily. They're measuring the brightness of the image, inside the image, and they're measuring the contrast of the image as well. Now, the Lumetroscope that I've chosen to use today and what I typically use uh, more than any of the other scopes that they have is the Waveform RGB Lumetroscope. So you can see it's already chosen, but and there's other options. But I feel like this one's going to be the easiest to use for someone who's just beginning to get their image correct, right? So waveform, RGB, I right click to bring that up. And this is what we're looking at now. You see that the RGB or the colors, it's showing that, but it's also showing again, the contrast of the image. So if I push up the contrast in my image here, it stretches. So it means I have more contrast. And also, like we said before, if I, uh, if I change the temperature, it's going to change the color. And you can see what color is being dominant. Green's dominant here, or blue in this case. If I bring it up here, then red or orange starts to become more dominant in the image. So it's gonna measure those things for you and give you a, um, a more accurate reading on what your image is doing or what you're doing to your image. So the first thing I like to look at, again, is exposure, and it's at the top. So if you look at my lemetroscopes, it looks like some of this stuff is going to be blown out. Now, the reason that this image is going to be blown out is because it's the sky and you can't beat the sun, right? So what we're looking at here is the lemetroscope mirrors what is happening in my image. So if you see here, there's a lot of overexposure happening in this area. Well, if you look at my image in this top corner, there's a lot of overexposure happening here because again, you can't beat the sun even on a cloudy day. Here on this section of the image, you see that the exposure has dropped a little bit. Well, who's sitting in the middle of the image? This guy, this handsome guy right here. 
that's why this part of the image is darker. On contrast, again, we're stretching the image so that there's more contrast in the image, which is what we're always trying to do when we're putting, putting together uh, footage. We're trying to bring the most contrast to the image to make the image stand out. So for me, I like to bump up the contrast pretty much all the way. Now, if you look at my Lumetri scopes, you can see what it's doing. It's stretching the image pretty far. And it's giving me more information to play with. Okay, I'm gonna keep it up here. But my image, if you look at the Lumetri scopes, you can see that all my information is still at the top and I need most of this information to be somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna have to do something to try to stretch the image again, even after I applied contrast. Since that the image is bright, I'm gonna bring down the highlights. Now you can see my Lumetri scope changing. Two things I'm looking for. I'm gonna look here for the scientific information to see what's happening and see if I'm getting the, the image to sit well within the middle of my Lumetri scope. But I'm also looking at my image as well and saying, hey, like, am I too lit, right? I feel like I'm too lit here. Sometimes I'm too lit. Um, or I'm gonna drag it down and say, hey, look, I may be a little too dark. I feel like in the way that I have it set for the highlights now, this looks great for me and the way that I'm situated in this uh, image, right? So I'm gonna drop the, the shadows again. Now what we're doing here is we're just adding more contrast to the image. You can see in my Lumetri scope it's starting to pull down some of that, uh, some of that information into the bottom part. I'm gonna go to my whites, I'm gonna look at those. Now whites typically I don't do too much with, but you can see how the white is a the whites are affecting the whole image. And then to get the image stretched to the bottom so that we have the most the most amount of um, contrast is I'm gonna bring down the blacks. As we can see, when I drag this down, this is doing just fine for my image. Then the last thing I'll do is I'll go back up in and add a little bit of saturation to the image. And that's just personal preference. You don't have to do that. But for me, I need, like to add a little bit of saturation. Now that we have the image corrected, we're gonna jump into the second part, which is adding in the creative blood. So first things I'm gonna do is click on my adjustment layer. So I'm affecting that and not the original footage. And now I'm in the adjustment layer. You can see here that I've closed the basic correction tab and I've opened the creative tab to get into where we're going to apply a LUT or a lookup table. You've probably seen this happen or you probably heard other creators talk about this, but this is basically where your creative expression is going to come from. Now for me, personally, I use the Canon Cinema Gamut uh, Canon Log 3 LUT. And I believe I got it from the website, the actual Canon website. I think that's where I got it from. Okay, now look at our image now. This is what our image looks like with the LUT on. And this is what it looks like with the LUT off, okay? So let's just turn the LUT on for now. When I turn this LUT on, I think that the, the image becomes too bright. So there's a couple ways you can manipulate this. Either one, I can stay in the creative tab and, and turn down the intensity here. You can see that being dialed back. But what that does, is that takes away the effect from the LUT. So I don't really like to do that unless I absolutely have to. So what I would do in this situation is I would actually go back to my image here or my footage and I would tweak the image from there to make it look the way I want to. So the first problem I want to solve is the fact that this is too bright for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the highlights and that's going to give me something that looks a lot better. So let's go back to what we have first. And this is what we have now. So let's move on to the second image. Now that we're on the second image, I'm going to move a little bit faster. Here's Muffy, one of the best skaters in Indianapolis. Go Muffy, go Muffy. Okay, this is the image. This has not been color corrected or color graded. So I'm gonna grab my adjustment layer, throw it over top so that I have it to use. And it's time to go. Okay, let's start color correcting. We'll go from the top to the bottom. I think this looks great for what it was as far as the white balance, but I'm going to try to find something that's white in there. Let me show you what it looks like if you click on something that's not white real quick, just so you see what, that, what happens. That's what happens, right? So it thinks that that's your version of white. We clearly know it's not. We just clicked on blue and this is what it gave us. So 
exposure looks good for now we may come back and tweak that but i'm gonna throw my contrast in there that looks good it's gonna start the image out right i'm gonna brighten up a little bit because i want her to be uh, uh lit <laughs> I'm uh, gonna drop the highlights. I'm gonna find something that fits for me again. If I drop it too low, you can't see her. So I'm somewhere in this range, so I think it's gonna work. Again, shadows, I'm gonna rock them a little bit, but not go too far. And then shadows, I'm gonna drop down just so I can stretch this image. Okay, so here we are. I think this looks great. This, uh, this is a good place to start. It's been corrected. Let me click on my adjustment layer. We're gonna go into creative tab and we're gonna again, again use the same LUT. And now this is what my image looks like. So what you're probably thinking is why wouldn't I throw the LUT on first and then go do the basic correction? Well, you can do it that way. You can go backwards and, and do it that way. I've just built up a, a habit of doing it this way and it gives me more, um, I feel like it gives me more control over what I'm trying to do with the image because I know what I did when I went to uh, color correct so I know what I need to change in order to make the image look the way that I want. So yes, you could throw a LUT on there first and, and then do it backwards. But for the sake of this being a, a beginner video, we're going to do it this way and you tweak it as you become an awesome advanced color grader. So I'm going to go back down to my image and now we're going to start making our tweaks on the basic uh, correction again. So I feel like this one is the, the image is too, too contrasty. So there's a couple ways, like I said, we could change that. I could either go back and change the intensity of the LUT, but we're going to try to avoid that if we can. So let's drop the highlights here a little bit. I'm going to punch the shadows up because she's kind of fading into the background. So I'm going to change that. Now we know this image is going to look a little dark, but that's okay. As long as she's lit enough, I think it's gonna look good. She doesn't necessarily have to be like super lit. She doesn't have to be like this. Doesn't look good, right, for the image. So this is actually, and now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking I should probably brighten it or brighten it a little bit. Well, I should have done the team left, I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so I think this image right here looks really great. You look at my lumetroscopes, everything is well balanced. It's very contrasty. This is the image before without the color grade and the LUT. And then this is the basic color correction. Got them. And the LUT thrown on. Okay. Last one, we'll make this one really fast. Okay. Adjustment layer, chunk it on. Here we are, information's in the middle. The brightest part of the image is right here because of the window. We're gonna to try to make this as contrasted as possible. So let's bump up our exposure so we can see her way better. Probably should have shot better. I probably should have bumped up the ISO when I shot it at the uh, wedding, but it is what it is. Contrast, highlights, not gonna to touch too much because we don't have much of a bright image there. Shadows are gonna be very careful there. Whites, I may bump up just so I can change the whole image and make that a little bit brighter and then we'll drop the black there okay boom back on it okay that's the image I have right now this is too intense for me I'm gonna go back in probably need to try to white balance again I thought I did before but let's see if it does in my eyes, that gives me a little bit of a green tinge and I don't like that. I'd much rather her have warm skin tones than this green look to it. Okay, so I could dial that down a little bit with the temperature. See where her skin tone took. I think this looks good. This is a good skin tone for her. Okay, and now we're trying to figure out what the final image will look like. And I think this looks great. Especially for the fact that she's not going to be the main character in the wedding. She is a bridesmaid and the and the, the bride is going to be the main character. So you're going to see a lot more of her. Again, we'll show you what it looks like without the basic correction. This is without the creative LUT. Okay. We corrected it. Boom. Then we added our LUT. 
Now, the cool thing about this is that this is the way that I see the image and I think it looks good to me and to the people who I deliver these, these images to. But your creative expression may look a little different. So the reason that I'm able to color grade these images so easily or so well is because I got the production right. You know, I had the settings dialed in to the way that I wanted them to look so that I was able to produce an image. And that's obviously working with ISO and aperture and, and shutter speed. Those things need to be dialed in to the way that you want them so that when you color grade later, you have the ability to manipulate the footage the way you want. Now, if you don't understand those three things that I just talked about, I talk about them in another video and you can check out that video right here.